Hello everyone and welcome to Sunday Politics on Channel Television. This is the flagship edition of Politics today which comes to you daily on Channel Television, the nation's news leader and where we bring you up to date information about the major headliner stories coming here in Nigeria on the political scene. Of course, I know one of the issues that may be playing out on your mind is how unclear the matter of the Anambra PDP leadership saga have gone, especially the Supreme Court judgment. Of course, what is the interpretation of uh, that judgment? Is it that the impact will be on some of the political office holders? Will they be losing their seats? Will some other people be replacing them? That may be some of the questions on the minds of so many Nigerians at this time. What really is are the judges saying after that particular judgment was delivered? A lot of interpretations have been given, especially for those who are in the National Assembly, the Senate, and uh, the House of Representatives. They have been talking, and of course, those who are beneficiaries of that particular judgment have also been talking. E.J.K. Ogwebeko and of course, Ken Emekai, all of them have been talking about this matter. What are you saying? You can be part of the conversation right here, right now on the program. The hashtag is there for you to follow. But then, let's know what you're saying about this. But again, what are these players saying? We'll bring you their reports, they have their minds in this report. Take a listen. The recent judgment by the Supreme Court on who is the authentic chairman of the PDP in Anambra State may have led to rest the chairmanship tussle in the state. But the issues of who should represent the three senatorial districts of Anambra North, South and Centre may just have begun. Senatorial candidates of the PDP belonging to the AGK or Gwebegos faction are asking INEC to issue them certificates of return. The answer of the Supreme Court case is very straightforward. It's INEC to issue us our certificate of return. There's nothing. Because that judgment of court of appeal is why the judgment they gave the certificate of return. Now the Supreme Court has set it aside and asked us to go back and take our certificate of return. I next really need for next week without wasting any more time. My lawyers are not wasting time to uh, write them that this ought to be done. I can personally go there and demand my certificate because it's my right. They also claim that they are the authentic candidates for the election recognized by the party's exco in the state. The party submitted our names. INEC published these names. It's a people all them uh, tend to forget. Published these names. There was the, the, the day of uh, substitution, time for substitution has passed. He cannot change. He cannot remove a candidate. He cannot remove anybody. And nobody, there was no debt in anybody. So INEC have already finished the, uh, what they're supposed to do. Our names was removed a few days to the election after we have finished campaigning for the elections. However, Senators Andy Oba and Stella Odua in an earlier interview said that the judgment has nothing to do with the senators from the state. It has nothing to do with, we are not a party to the suit. You can look at the, the, the judgment and see that nowhere in the judgment did our name appear. And the, a consequential order was not made. In regards to this, if the Supreme Court thought that we were wrong in where we are or that we came through a false means, they would have made a consequential order to remove us. The judge was very clear on its judgment and it clearly says that it's not about who emerges, it's not about the election, it's about the legality of the ESCO, state ESCO. That, that's all it is. The Supreme Court had on Friday ruled that the AGK Ogwe Begos led executive committee of the PDP subsists, contrary to an earlier judgment by a federal high court. Thank you so much for staying with us. That uh, those some of the thoughts about the Anambra uh, governorship, uh, PDP leadership torso and the outcome of the Supreme Court judgment. Of course, what are people talking about during the conversation? A major topic for tonight is uh, 
the many questions on the minds of Nigeria over the role of military in elections and perhaps if uh, uh, they should be used at all in the conduct of our electoral activity. Security may be important for elections or even before or after elections. But for the matter of equity and Austrian elections, they bring to the fore the role of military in an election. And the issue of equity gate went viral after a leaked audio recording uh, went viral on the internet. In March 2014, Channel Television made this expose and this report. And this is what we want you to see before we get talking on the matter of equity gate here, right here on the program. We were not expecting this type of landslide victory, although we knew we would win, but this is too massive. That was the immediate reaction of one of the PDP chieftains on the result of the Akiti governorship election. The election result is perhaps a first in the political history of Nigeria. This may be considering that an incumbent governor was beaten not only in his local government area, but in every local government of a state. Pundits and analysts have tried to give explanations to what could have been responsible for this. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The incumbent and APC candidate in the governorship election on the morning of the day the result was announced made a statewide TV broadcast, though not less shocked. If indeed this is the will of the Ekiti people, I stand in deference to your will. The APC challenged the case in court, but the PDP's candidate, Mr. Yodele Fayoshi, emerged victorious. Months down the line, However, a new factor is perhaps changing the narrative as to what really transpired in the Ekiti 2014 governorship election. Chief never believed. A few weeks ago, a purported secret audio recording surfaced online. It discloses a purported meeting of some PDP chieftains in the over 30-minute recording. Conversations about the elections, especially as relating to the role of the military, were allegedly largely discussed. Alleged to be present are Mr. Fayoshe, who was then the governorship candidate of the PDP, former ministers for state for defense, Musili Obanikoro, police affairs Caleb Olubolade, and Senator Yola Omishere, and a former member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Abdul Karim. The PDP leaders are said to be meeting with a then military commander of the 32 Artillery Brigade. Some of the aspects of the recording which raise concerns are first, statement made by Mr. Fayoshe which reveals there might be some prior meeting staged in Abuja, the seat of power, and links with top officials of the military. The chief officer called me myself and told me he has briefed him. I gave me his number because I never met him before. And I, he told me, you are a safe hands, he will perform, and if you have any issues, call me. And he told me that I have made it clear to him that you are doing nothing for this election. We agreed in Abuja on the modalities to work. And we agree to a sticker. And any vehicle you see that sticker, they allow that sticker. Another is what may have drawn the umpire INEC into the fray. The, the thing INEC gave to us, soft copy, we now printed everything. So that, he now told me, because they see INEC thing on top of it. They packed all the computers, it took me more than two hours to get this one to release. The intense conversation appears to have slightly shaken the general and when the then Minister for State for Defence waded in at some point, a clear warning for him to cooperate was given, perhaps to avoid any sad consequence. Don't talk too much. I want you to go and work and deliver for us. Look here. Yes, sir. I am, you can't get promotion without me sitting on top of your military council. Yes, sir. If I am happy, if I'm a happy man tomorrow night, eh? The sky is your limit. And if I'm unhappy at the same time, I am not here for tea party. I'm here on assignment. The man who claims to have made the recording, Captain Sagir Kali, who is currently on self exile, brings some insight into the meeting. First was how the military personnel were used and how the team, which was specifically marked for the task, was identified. Uh, on the election day, there was banners, hand banners. You see some of our soldiers, you see them with hand banner, purple in color. That anybody with that hand banner 
we are now free access for women on the election day. From Channel's television's coverage of the election, people were seen being arrested as military officers ran after others. A close look is perhaps a match with Captain Coley's description of the special officers. Officers with purple handbands. Now, when Fai O'Shea and his team now reached the airport to receive the president and his uh, entourage, we are, we are staying together with Obanikoro and his ADC. He told uh, Fai O'Shea at the airport that see the new brigade commander that we brought to you based on your request. From there, I was shocked. I said, this thing is going to be why this sudden chain of command. And more revelations from the officer. When we entered Ekiti State, that is uh, uh, five days to the elections, five days to the elections specifically, uh, I learned that uh, the whole troops, okay, the whole troops, officers and soldiers, they were, they handed them over to PDP supporters and PDP talks. So I could not even, I can tell you specifically the number of arrestments, but there was mass arrest of APC members, APC chieftain before the election. The hotel we stayed, she will not dwell in hotel along fire headquarters. That is where I stay with my commander throughout the elections. Now, in that hotel, our rooms, specifically the commander's room, is filled of money. You see, so so Ghana must go with money. I asked why he fled the country. He tells me this. My life is under threat. But for Senator Iyala Omishore, this is how he describes the secret audio tape. There was no meeting, actually. No, I heard she went to the army camp to go and complain about the army, the Nigerian army arresting his uh, people, alleging that then go for the army bribery, they just suggest to arrest his people. That was just all. Channel television tried to reach some of those purportedly identified in the audio tape, but all efforts hit the rocks. The governor of Ekiti State would prefer to react to the matter through his commissioner for information. And for Governor Fayoshe, the audio tape is false and simply a political stunt to distract him. It's just a political stunt because if, they, if it were to be an evidence, well, and they have a case in court, all they need to do is apply through their lawyers to add you know, to the evidence they have. Nigerian lawyer and rights activist Mr. Femi Falano argues that the intention of the meeting by the people involved may be faulted. Uh, when you militarize an election, in the first place it's illegal. As the Court of Appeal has just said again now, uh, whoever deployed soldiers for that election committed illegality by violating the constitution. We also sought to know what is being done within the military to investigate the matter but no clue as to what the army is doing on the issue. INEC may not be totally blameless in the matter, but then whether or not this is a matter of concern to the commission is unclear. INEC, as the institution responsible for guaranteeing the integrity of the electoral system, needs to undertake its own investigation into what transpired, into the credibility or otherwise of those allegations, in order also to ensure for itself that outside actors don't compromise its systems, that outside actors don't undermine the credibility of the electoral system.